When the woven rush mat has been sewn to the base, the side of the tatami mat is covered with a strip of fabric. This too is sewn to the base. In the past, all tatami mats were sewn by hand. Today, however, most production is done by machine. It takes more than half an hour to sew a mat by hand. A machine does the same job in a few minutes. There are two types of machine used for sewing tatami mats. One machine sews lengthways and the other does the ends. The size of a Japanese room is traditionally measured by the number of tatami mats it contains. Let's see how a fusuma sliding partition is made. First of all, the paper for the underlining is prepared. The craftsman uses a weak solution of glue to prepare the underlining for cutting. Japanese paper is used for the underlining. The paper absorbs the moisture from the glue and after it's been scored, it can be gently pulled apart. The glue is carefully applied to the section of paper that will be stuck to the wooden frame. The sheet of prepared paper is then brushed onto the frame. It takes great skill to apply the glue correctly as both the glue and the way the underlining is applied will affect the final appearance of the top layer of paper. Now it's time for the top layer of paper to be applied and for this a much thicker glue is used. The glue is spread all over the sheet of paper so that it will strengthen the underlining and also hold the top layer down evenly. The top layer is made from one sheet of paper. If it's just slightly out of alignment, the whole panel will be affected and look odd. The paper is carefully brushed onto the underlining and any air bubbles worked out so as not to cause an uneven surface. When the paper is in place, a hole is cut for the handle. This enables the sliding screen to be opened and closed easily. Nowadays, printed Japanese paper is used to make fusuma sliding partitions. In the past, it was quite common to decorate the panels by painting, and some examples of fusuma panel paintings have been designated national treasures. Now let's see how a shoji panel is made. A shoji panel is made from a wooden frame covered with white Japanese paper. The glue is applied only to the wooden frame. The craftsman carefully attaches the sheet of paper to the frame where it absorbs the moisture from the glue. Once the paper dries, the surface of the shoji becomes as tight as a drum. 
The tradition of building houses with wooden material survives in today's Japan. The old idea of supporting pillars and interlocking timbers is evident in the construction of this modern residence. The thick joist bears all the load of the upper structure. Various specialist joints are used to interlock the timbers. Wood can be fixed more strongly this traditional way than by using nails or screws. Recently, the construction of tall buildings using steel and concrete has been on the increase in Japan. The apartments built inside these modern buildings usually have rooms made to a western design, but it's still very common to have at least one room built in a traditional Japanese style. So it seems the concept of traditional Japanese architecture lives on, even in mighty modern tower blocks made of concrete, steel and glass.